Happy Halloween, motherfuckers! What's up, party people? How's it going? My name is Cyclone Hunter, and welcome back to Choices. Yeah, this is actually very shocking. It's <laughs> I never thought I'd be back in this game, cause um, you guys don't know, Choices is pretty much exactly like episodes. Only difference is that episodes feels like you're watching a actual TV show where people are moving and shit, and you know. Uh, actual drama happens. You don't have to read every little fucking detail. Well, that's what Choices is. <laughs> choices, you read pretty much everything like the damn book. So, yeah. Um, this is where my channel sort of first started. For, th for some of y'all that don't know. Um, this is where the channel fully started, where it was sort of picking up. And then Gotcha World came, and that's where the channel was sort of going up a little bit, but then going down a bit, too. So, the reason I just wanted to do this was because, you know, it's Halloween, this video's going up on Tuesday, because, you know, it's Hallow-fucking-ween, all this shit like that. So, um, I'm not sure if I am going to continue it, how about y'all guys let me know, and I'll do a Horror Tuesday type series with this bitch, I don't know. Um, I could try it, see what happens, I don't know. Mm. But this was going to be even harder, because that gives me only one fucking day to edit it. <laughs> I mean, I might start a little bit on Sunday, because that's when I'm recording it right now. Uh, Sunday, October 29th. Yeah. That's when I'm recording it right now. Um, so I might be able to do a little bit today. Uh, not entirely sure, but I will try. So, we're going to read Chapter 1 and Chapter 2. Just get it done and over with. Might as well. And, yeah. So, let's read this, bitch. Something old and powerful lives in the woods surrounding the small town of Winchester. Something that knows your name. Freaky, let's go, bitch. Fuck you up. Oh, I just realized that I'd have to pay keys if I didn't. I could just do all three chapters, put it all in one video. I love the holiday season. Yeah, if you guys don't know, Halloween is literally my most favorite season to do because it's, it's just fun. Because you get dressed up Mess with people, you know, whatever. Hmm? Oh, they updated their shit. Okay, uh, this book contains disturbing images and... What the fuck does that say? Disposition of violence and bullying. Player discretion is advised. Okay, so see? Okay, see, that's a good thing. And then, to be honest, Choices need to put more of that type of shit out with some of the videos. Because, like, the whole, like... Oh, I'm getting drunk. My shit gets demonetized. Well, they get reviewed for monetization because of some of the crap like that. But this, I don't. If it has this, I don't really have to worry about anything because it has it. It says what's wrong with it, and that's why I don't have to worry about it. But whenever it says something like, "Oh, this guy's drunk. Oh, this guy's at a bar," it's I don't know. It just depends. It just really depends. I don't know how this monetization thing works. I know the cussing thing really ain't a big deal. Unless you say like a horrible freaking word that you're not supposed to say. Let me rephrase that. Unless you say a horrible fucking word that you're not supposed to say. So, yeah. Uh, player discretion is advised. And just want to clarify this too. Put it in the middle of the video. I do not support any of this crap. The... the depositions? I don't... Depositions? Yeah, depositions of violence and bullying. I do not... Uh, support that ever because I'm fully against that because I hate bullying. I honestly hate it And that's why whenever my nieces or my nephew uh, bullies each other. I bully them <laughs> so then I can show them what uh, They are not supposed to fucking do Because they're fucking brother and sister. Okay, so let's continue this Ooh. It's time to create my character Can I be a fucking dude? I want to play. Yes! Thank God! Choices finally gives me a chance. Oh dear Lord! If y'all guys do not know, oh my God, this has been the thing I've been bitching about the most with this fucking game. Most of the fucking stories have been, oh, you're gonna be a fucking girl. I'm so happy. Okay, I'm a guy. Choose my character's face. I'm not black. <laughs> that looks a bit Asian, but that might be me. 
Never mind. Is that is that is that all? Wait, they have more. Yeah, anyway, maybe that's me. But what's this? Oh, okay. I can just, I guess I can just check out the full body. I can't pick it up. What the fuck? Oh! Give me a sec. Well, that sucks. Music's all fucked now. Okay, so let's just go with the face we were gonna go. Oh, well, not Asian. That one. That fits me the most. Now choose my hand. What? Oh my god! <laughs> no, I want that. Ew, no, what's wrong with you? Ew, no, what's wrong with you? Oh my god! No. What the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah. Oh man. I'm not blonde. I don't have that type of hair. I don't have that. I guess I gotta go with the emo hair. Looks emo. Ah, bad choices already. Finally, it's time to choose my name. All right, let's see. We have H. We have I. This guy's name will be... Despacito. Despacito. Did I spell that right? <laughs> I, don't, I don't think I spelled that right. Wait, did I spell it right? Oh, shit, I did. Oh, well, I didn't know my crap then. Despacito. Oh, that's my name, Despacito. Let's go, bitches. Despacito. Kata kata keto. Hala tata kaka. Choose this look. Yeah, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. I'm goth, by the way. Can I make my phone go buzz? <laughs> Let's see if I can do it real quick. Oh, it doesn't buzz? What the hell? That's stupid. Okay, well, my phone's dumb. Okay, well, bzzz. Uh, what? Still have a sleep. We grope around in the shelf until we find... Uh, damn. Well, oh. It's taking me at 3 in the fucking morning. Whoa, this is new! Hey, are you there? It's Dan. What? I messed up. I'm so sorry. Dan, it's been a while. You okay? What happened, bro? Wait. I went back into the woods. I had to be sure. I had to prove to myself that it was all in my head. But it isn't Despacito. It's all real. He's real! Dan, are you drunk or something? I heard him whispering, just like when we were kids. Stop it, Dan. We made all that stuff up. Mr. Red was just a dumb kid's game that got out of control. He doesn't exist. He never did. He does. He's here with me now. Wait, where are you? I can hear him in the trees. I hear him whispering. Whoa, that's fucking creepy. A horse? Wait, from the window? I think they have a big ass window, so that doesn't help. Makes us jump, dropping our phone. Yeah! I'm trying to get as many sounds as I can. Finally, I got that one. Ah! A dark shape looms outside the window. Hard hammering in the, our chest, we fumble for the light switch. <laughs> Light floods. What? Light floods our bedroom, streaming out the window to reveal. Dan, what are you doing here? Despacito, can I come in? I, I guess so. Hang on. We move to the window and slide it open enough for Dan to climb inside. You got some explaining to do, though. First off, what the hell are you doing here? 
We've barely spoken in years and suddenly you decide to pay me a visit at 3 in the fucking morning? Like, bruh. I'm sorry. Don't apologize. Tell me what's fucking going on. You sounded really freaked out in your texts and shit. There's nothing. I'm fat. Come on. We need to get out. Get the others. What others? Our friends, Stacy, Lily, Noah, Lucas, Ava, and Andy. I've got something to show you, but we need to bring everyone. Bruh, Dan, I've already spoken, I've barely spoken to any of that group since we were little kids after what happened to Jane. Well, they have to come, Despacito, everyone. I can't get used to that name. Everyone has to come, Despacito. Everyone has to be there. That's the rule. Our phone buzzes again, rattling against the floorboards, singing, sighing, we pick it up. <sighs> Dan, I want to help you, but honestly, you're kind of freaking me out right now. We got a first day of school, wait, what? We got our first day of school in like six, oh, dude, we got our first day of school in like six hours. We can talk then, okay? Phone buzzes again, another notification pops up on the screen, we look down. What? You stupid bitch. Are you still there? I think I'm lost. Espacito, my battery's almost dead. Please help me. Whoa, wait a minute. Wait. We have to go back to the woods, Espacito. Whoa, 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 whoa. The lights in our bedroom flicker as we chill wind sweep through our open window. Hands trembling, we slowly look up from our phone screen. Dan? A smile spreads across Dan's shadowed face, stretching brighter than it should. Despacito. We start to back away, but Dan's hand clamps around our wrists. We try to pull free, but he clings to it. He clings to us with inhuman strength. Hey! I should punch him. First slam against Dan's cheek, but he barely even flinches. What the? Dan throws up. Throws us to the floor, pinning our back against the rough boards. We all have to go back. Don't you remember? Get off me! We claw Dan and his flesh crumbles beneath our fingernails. Dan leans in, his cold breath stinking of moldy dirt and blood. Give me a sec. Wait, right, uh, moldy dirt and blood. Everyone plays together, Despacito. Oh, whoa, 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 that's new, that is new, that is new, can I press it? That is fucking new, oh my god. The creature's hand tightens around our throat, our vision begins to blur, shadows seem to rip the boot, bleed in the dark room, oh my god. <laughs> we had no breath left to scream, we simply sink, paralyzed by terror, into a cold, black nothingness. Oh, that's bad. Oh, fuck you. <laughs> that was creepy. <laughs> Old friends. Ah! Oh. <sighs> we jerk into a wakefulness, adrenaline burning in our veins as we thrash against our attack until we realize that. We're alone in our room. The hell? Oh, what a messed up dream. Reaching up to fill our neck, we flinch as our, our fingers brush the fresh bruises there. What the? Okay, the toilet. Scary or upsetting things will decrease your nerve score. Beware, a low nerve score will make it much harder to keep your cool in dire situations. Oh, now see, that's badass. <laughs> so in other words, like, okay, you know that, like, quick timer thing where it asked me if I should punch him or some shit? Apparently, from what I'm getting at it, um, if our nerve is too low, the time will go too damn quick and we won't have enough time to read them all. You'll just be clicking one and that's it. That's actually pretty cool. No way, this, this can't be happening. 
We got our phone to look at the text from last night. Phone. Phone. Phone, sweet daddy. Okay. Last night, only discovered that the battery is dead. Ugh, crap! Sign! What the fuck? I don't know how that happened. Okay. Sign, we toss our phone into the school bag and turn it into our closet. Ah, guess I better get ready for school. You look good for my first day of senior year, bitches. Fuck yeah. Damn it! I was gonna go for that. <laughs> the hair fits perfectly. Yes, we got. I like that. That looks all right, actually. Grabbing a school bag, we're hurry downstairs. <laughs> oh my god! I live here. I'm fucking terrified. Look at that tree. Outside, we cast a nervous glance towards the woods that bonder the edge of our yard. Mr. Red. Then couldn't have seen him. It was all just make-believe. As we descend the steps, a friendly voice calls out from the yard next door. Morning, neighbor. Oh, hey, say, what's up? Just coming back from my walk. Hey, Hilda, look who it is. Blue, black, and white fur crashes out and bushes looking round excitedly. Oh, it's a dog. Ah, sorry, my throat is still parched, man. It's still parched. Woof. Ah, dog. <laughs> Hilda bounds over to us, her bushy tail wavering like a flag. Hey, girl! How you doing? Things that make you feel happy and brave will increase your nerve score. Having a lot of nerve will help you weather the trials ahead. Ah, oh, you're cute. Oh, good to see you too, kitty. Hilda flops on her back, wiggling happily as we rub her belly. Your parents, oh, your parents are out. I didn't see him out and about this morning. Uh, yeah, they're still overseas dealing with my great aunt's estate or whatever. They'll be back in a couple weeks. Well, that's a long time for a kid to be by themselves, especially in a big house like that. Yeah, uh, I can take care of myself. I yeah, just turned 18, you know, I can do my own laundry and everything. I'm getting pretty good at, at mac and cheese, too. I've only set out to smoke alarm. Set out to smoke alarm like psh, three times this week, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, that girl was all ass. Fuck you, man. I, I just realized that guy looks like a, a lot like, um... Dude, that'd be so weird. I just thought about this. Because they were talking about the estate. Like, uh, going across seas, talked about non state. I wonder if he's in, like, Europe time or some shit, and they went to America, and then that's where Braidwood Manor comes up. And then this guy, Sid, he, he's the great, 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 I don't know how many greats, but great-grandson of Jackson in The Crown the Flame. Oh my god, this would be crazy if this was true. Oh, Sid suddenly cocked his head, taking a few steps toward our house and crouching down beside a small pile of loose dirt. Huh? I wonder what this is. Sid picked something off, but out of the pile holds it up, a glossy black stone card with a strange ruin. This yours? Wow! That's cool. Weird. Stone is surprisingly heavily in our hand. We move our thumb along the deep crack. The runs through the center of the engraved ruin. I wonder where this came from, and what broke it. Beats me! Looks like a paper raid or something. Brushing away some of the dirt from the stone, we freeze as a familiar smell waits to our nose. Cold earth and a hint of blood. 
It smells just like that thing that... You stop yourself glancing nervously at Sid. Smells like what? Oh, uh, weird. It d just smells kind of weird. Sid nods, dusting off his hand. Well, I'll let you get to school. You just let me know if you need anything all right. My door's always open, bitch. Ah, uh, will do. Thanks, Sid. Crazy bitch. Sid whistles. Hilda jumps up to follow him. Once they're out of sight, we look down at the stone in our hand. If what I saw last night was real, this could be a clue. Better keep it somewhere safe. It takes a few tries for us to open the shed door. It's rusted, hinges screeching from every shove. Jeez, when's the last time someone was in here? Cobwebs tickle our face as we approach the work table, setting the cracks stoned, stoned down on its dusty surface. <clears throat> oh, what? These are all clues? Can I move it? No. The inventory shed will house all the weapons, artifacts, and lore documents that you collect over the course of the story. There are 16 items total. Some will make you stronger in the trials ahead. Others will provide valuable information, backstory, and clues. Hmm. Bet I could fit all kinds of stuff in here. Flickering out the light, we step back out of the yard, shutting the shed door behind us. A few minutes later on the asphalt road that runs along the edge of the road, we hear a car approaching from behind. Setting to the side, we glance up, looking, locking eyes with the driver of Black Vintage Camaro, Seb. That guy looks familiar. Car slows to stop, and the driver leans out through the open window. Hey, do I know you for somewhere? I think so. I was just wondering the same thing. Do you go to Winchester High? Not anymore. Thank God. We left that hellhole behind a couple of years ago. Gaya. Lucky you. Hang in there. We'll be out before you know it. Anyway, I better get to work. Catch you later, bro. He steps at the gas and the car starts to pull. Oh, thanks. Don't drive me to. S don't don't give me a fucking ride. You fucking asshole. Oh, I never got your name. Damn ass. But he's already too far away to hear. Disappearing around Ben the road. Name. Shrugging, we continue our long walk towards school. Asshole. A thin crowd of students tickle across the front yard of our school, raving, calling out to friends and their co con co something on the floor something. Squeezing through the loud, crowded hall, we find a familiar girl standing at the locker next to ours. Oh, hey, Ava! Oh. So. Not much, uh, that hasn't always been our luck, has it? i never seen you using it before. Wait, what? Got reassigned. Did I read that right? Ava kicks the locker shut and shrugs her bag onto her shoulder. Oh, look, it's Lily. Following Ava's gaze, we see a nervous girl clutching a textbook to her chest. Uh, hi guys. Hi, Lily. It's been a while. How was your summer? Daddy, you've been good. I just came back to join a good camp up there in Portland, man. One of the other girls invent invited me to collaborate on a game she's working on. Hey, that's awesome. Let me know if you ever need a playtester. Lily glances around. Relatively lowering her voice. Uh, there's, uh, um, there's actually something I want to talk to you about. Uh, uh sure. What's up? I, I got some really weird texts last night. Did you? Lily trails off, looking over our shoulder. We turn to see a pretty girl walking by, chatting with two friends. Oh my God! Look, I've been ghosting this guy for like two solid weeks, and he just asked me out. For coffee. Oh, good. 
Oh boy, just when you think high school might not be the sucking necrotic chest room that you remember. Guy next to Brittany laughs, running one hand through his hair. <laughs> uh, yikes, this guy is not a good luck. Maybe he's just not scared of ghosts. You could try clowns instead. Clowns are gross. That's not just. Do you even know about. Hi, Brittany! Oh. Hi, Brittany! Whoop stops in the tracks and Brittany turns to give Lily an impressing look. Oh, wow, Lily. Great sweater. I don't know a Barbie Bond had a quadruple XL section. Bitch! Uh, uh, yeah, I just wanted to say hello! And I want a red for Barbie for my birthday. But I'll settle for not having to listen to your whiny voice anymore, bitch. Damn. Your friends have nerve scores too, and your choices can make a big difference. In the final chapter, a character's nerve score will decide if they vanquish their demons or succumb to a terrible fate. No, 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 I'm gonna tell this bitch off. Right, because basing your fashion sense on whatever the one one of what want to be models of pic pictogram are wearing is way cooler. Newsflash, Despacito, no one asked you. Well, guess what, bitch? My name's number one fucking song on YouTube has a billion fucking views, bitch. Didn't hear anyone asking for your opinion either. How about you take your unsocialized fashion advice to someone who fucking cares, bitch? You so do not want to piss me off, Despacito. <laughs> Ooh, I'm shaking, bitch. Lily looks down at the floor, hiding a small smile. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> oh, yeah, well. Witty comebacks onto a strong suit, track, and field body. Cross country, bitch! I know, I used the wrong one on purpose to piss you off. Try to keep up, dumbass. How about you go hunt some other hallway freaks? <laughs> the things I'm doing with this guy. <laughs> Oh, you're losing my arm going like, yeah, yeah, like a, I don't know, I don't know how to show you. <laughs> if I gives a Cody a long, mannerist look that reaches not to pluck a stray hair from his shoulder. You know, I keep meaning to try, you know, I keep meaning to try this out in the curse found on the internet. Do you feel a burning sensation in your eyeballs? That's normal. The, uh, the hell? Uh, uh. Raggling her fingers, Avery stalks her way down the hall. There it goes. Later. <laughs> that is a... Yeah. Ew, Cody. What's gonna happen to your eyeballs? Like, oh my god. Chill, Jocelyn. The weirdo just reads too many vampire novels. With any luck, she'll flunk out and go live in a dirty old shack. Like, Pritch the Witch. She is just like Pritch the Witch. We should call her uh, uh, Ava the Witch. <laughs> That's not even clever. Well, good one, Joss. Okay. We shake our head, turning to grab a notebook from the locker. Oh, lovely as this has been, uh, we should probably go. Oh my god, is that a fucking hickey? Jocelyn reaches up, poking the fresh bruises on the side of our neck. Ah! Ah, get off! Yeah, but <laughs> he, he like, like anyone would want to chew on this social reject. Got it from your mom, bitch. <laughs> Huh? I thought Cody's mom was in Aspen this week. Oh my fucking god. Okay. 
You should watch your, what you say, Despacito. The, oh, wait. I said that wrong. You should watch what you say, Despacito. The mouth of yours tends to get you in trouble. Whatever fascin fascinating as this combo is, I need to get go get ready for this prep valley. Bitch. 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 I'm doing this with a fucking open window. <laughs> Pretty jerks ahead, and the others follow Cody, shoulders, cheeks, uh, us as he walks by, knocking us hard against a locker. Uh. Hey! We'll catch you later, Despacito. Oh, yeah. Wincing, we rub our shoulder where it slammed against the lockers, glaring after the bullies. School year is already off to a great start, huh? Should, should we prepare the two hours or Sure, millionth times the charm, right? Maybe this time they'll actually get in trouble. Link smiles ruefully as the two of us join the coward crowd of students shuffling toward the gym. Okay, so let's get back into this. I had to refill my cup because, god damn, my throat is burning from doing this crap. Okay. Music blares over the gym speakers and rush a panic hits as we jolted by the crowd. We mind flashing back to the night before. Or our minds flashing back to the night before. Okay, my bad. This was it, are you okay? Uh, yeah, yeah, just uh, kind of crowded in here. You see anywhere to sit? Not really. Looks like there are a couple seats up the, there next to. Oh, never mind, I have to have a spot. And Tom rode to the bleachers, Ava sits scribbling, uh, scribbling into a worn sketchbook. As we watch a couple of fresh move, freshmen move to sit beside her. <coughs> oh, the freshmen trip over themselves, scrambling to get out. God damn, now I got a burp. Oh man, that's not good. Away from Ava, she glares after them, then notices us watching her. <laughs> Ava nods to the empty bench. Is is she inviting me to sit by her? I think she is. Maybe I could talk with Ava about what happened last night. She knows about all the kinds of supernatural stuff. It'd be nice to tell someone to actually believe me. I gotta pay for this shit, right? Huh? Talking through your troubles or just spending time with friends is a great way to boost your nerve. Sit with Ava for a chance to catch up and learn from her supernatural ex ex <sighs> The many reasons! <laughs> ah! I hate this game. Okay. Sorry, Ava. I think I'd rather sit somewhere else. Okay, uh, I think there's a spot over there, but Mr. Cooper, it doesn't look like there's a room for both of us, though. Ah, uh, you go ahead. I'll find a spot somewhere. Uh, okay, you sure? Uh, oh, and thanks for your help earlier. Anytime. See you later, Liddy. L L L L Lily. We keep moving, finally spotting one empty seat right next to a familiar figure slouching in the second room. You said that? Oh crap! Quickly turn around, uh, desperately scanning the crowd for another open seat. Any seat but that one, but there aren't any. God damn. We consider trying to sneak back and out of the gym until someone shouts at us from a few rows up. Hey, leave my seat up. Sit your stupid ass down unless you want to watch from that garbage can, bitch. I, uh... Hello, you're black and you're real, and that spot right there, like, oh my god. Rancing, we turn back around to see no one looking right at us. Hey Noah, do you, do you mind if, you know... Look so well. Look so well, bruh. Noah scoots over and we squeeze it beside him. What's wrong with him? What's wrong with Noah? <clears throat> 
you guys are gonna see. So, uh, what's been up with you? We haven't really talked since the... <laughs> yeah, I know that. We sit, neither of us saying another word, down on the floor of the gym. A tall, handsome guy with glasses walks up to the podium. How are you doing, Winchester High? Wait, is that an actual picture of an auditorium? Students roar in response. The bleachers rumble and shake as the crowd pounds to their feet on the wood. Whoa. When did Lucas get so popular? Surely after hitting six feet and discovering head gel? Surely before getting elected student body president, bruh? Huh? Lucas waves to the cheering crowd, flashing a smile. <laughs> Welcome back, everyone. For anyone who doesn't know me already, I'm Lucas Thomas, your student body president. I'm trying to sound like Barack. It doesn't work. I know everyone's a little salty, but someone is over it. But trust me, there's going to be one school year you'll never forget. And on the note, let's kick this pep rally up. Winchester Wolf style. Yeah. <laughs> pump up rock. And <laughs> Lucas signals several cheerleaders jump up from the bleachers, bouncing and braiding their pom poms in the air. You can't do better than that. Let's hear it, bitches. Okay, well, it looks like Stacy's doing pretty well, too. <laughs> one by one, the cheerleaders tremble across the gym. Stacy draws thunderous cheers as she pulls off the effortless. Round off into a backflip. Woo! Whoa! That's incredible. Means all right. <laughs> uh, yeah, a good team, bro. Beaming, Stacy looks back at the rest of the cheer squad. Her smile suddenly fading as she locks eyes with Brittany. <laughs> Stacy turns and suddenly trips over her. Feet sprawling on it. Oh. oh! Stacy! Ah! Oh. We jump to our feet, hurrying to help Stacy up. Are you okay? What happened? I just clutch, I guess. You think you're a klutz, uh. You did a freaking backflip. Seriously. That's what Klutz looks like, then sign me up for Klutz lessons. <laughs> Thanks, Esposito. You're a sweetheart. <laughs> I try. <laughs> yeah. I need this. Sorry, Jocelyn's really fucking stupid. <laughs> she just did that she was all like where <laughs> Please have a skill news nerds got that on camera. <laughs> Blushing, Stacy rejoins the rest of the squad. We sit back down at the other end. Jim Brittany steps forward with a smug smile. <laughs> Bitch, check this. Brittany takes three running steps, then flies into no handed car. Whoa. Crowd roars as she sticks the landing. <laughs> why do people why do people like her so much? They got to know how hard they gotta know how horrible she is. And she's hot and she can do flips. We can't compete with that, bro. True. Sure. Lucas grins from the podium and the cheerleaders return to their seats. Wow! Well, now that the cheer squad is done totally blowing our minds. Let's give it up for the Winchester Wolves basketball team. All right. <laughs> God, God damn it. That's not even Barack no more. <laughs> God damn it. More applause sounds as the group of the guys in the basketball jerseys warm up. And from the podium. Woo! Yeah. Go Wolves. Yeah. Huh? And he actually made the team this year. Well, bruh. No, oh, good for him. Looks like he's been working hard. I can't wait to see him play. 
We flinch as Cody's voice breaks through the general applause. It's the triple. Killing myself with this with his voice. Oh my god. I'm dying here. This is the worst episode. Andy's head snaps in the direction of Cody's voice. His face suddenly twisting with anger. Oh my god. Hey, why did you come down here, Ed? <sighs> takes one step toward the bleachers, but stops himself as Lucas calls the team captain up to the podium. Thanks, Lucas. Watch up to Winchester Her The crowd whoops and stomps in response. Whoop, whoop. Sorry. Feels like, it, feels like adults don't know the actual reality of a pep rally. <coughs> Nobody gets excited for a pep rally. We got our first game coming up in a couple of days. So you guys had better be here to watch us. Crush it! Not gonna lie, we got a couple rookies on the team this year, but I'm not gonna let that stop! Well, Ben pauses the gym lights suddenly thicker. Huh? Oh no. Lucas' voice calls out over the speakers, drowning out the nervous chatter of the students. Everyone, stay seated. We don't want anyone to fall from the... Burst of static cuts him off, and the music stutters fading in and out. Without bang, the gym doors are blown open by a frig gust of wind. The lights flicker back on, and we nearly jump out of our seat as Noah suddenly grabs our arm. What are you... Shut up. Did you hear that, bro? Hear what? Shh, shh. And you do hear it. Just barely on the edge of perception. Your sound that snatches all the breath from our body and leaves us cold. No. Not here. We look around, picking out the faces of our former friends. Uh, this can't be. Oh, no, I... Oh, my God. Oh, fuck. Music sputters and dies. The lights shut off, completely leaving only the voice. A voice that is once completely alien. No. Horror. Everyone, please. Hello, my name is Sackle Hunter, and welcome back to It Lives in the Woods. In the last episode, I don't fucking remember what happened in the last episode. I don't even know why I'm doing this, it's the same fucking video. <laughs> I'm so stupid. Oh, what? Ten years ago. Whoa. Oh, what? We are now playing as Despacito. Sorry. Autumn sun sits through the trees as we follow our best friends deep into the woods. Sorry, where are we going? Your mom's gonna kill us if she finds out that we went this far by ourselves. I know, but you gotta see, it's a little further. I don't know what is it. Oh my god. Is this the words or is this a fucking jungle? Jane leads us to an edge of the clearing, pointing to a crumbling stone building on the other side. Whoa. Whoa. What's this place? I don't know, but watch this. Jane scoops up a pebble and tosses it at the house. It sells straight over the threshold, 
then stops in midair. No way! Pebble hangs in the air for a moment, then drops straight down. That is so awesome! Let me try! We pick up our own pebble, chuck it to the doorway, and it hits the same invisible barrier, dropping to the ground. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, excuse me. I wonder what's inside. Inside? We we can't go inside. How come? We can't get anyone in here anymore. Look, these holes in the roof. Sorry, I got a burp. What if you're wrong? What if we get in trouble, but what if something bad happens? We look at Jane, who stands with her hands balled tight into the fist, her lower lip trembling. Now, I'm guessing something bad happens to this Jane chick, because in the last episode. <coughs> or a chapter with choices. Hey, you got your birthday present with you? Sniffling, Jane nods, reaching under the collar to pull out an old whistle hanging from a necklace chain. Okay. Good. Remember when I said when I gave it to you? Hey, then if I ever get scared, I should blow on the whistle and you'll come and protect me. Jane raises this whistle to her lips. She blows a high trill that what? Uh, I guess high trill that rises and falls and echoes through the clearing. <laughs> You're my best friend, Jane. I'm not gonna let anything bad happen to you. I lied. <laughs> Glancing back at the ruins. God damn, I shouldn't even be fucking joking about this. Oh my god. Okay, glancing back at the ruins, we can almost hear the stones calling, reaching for us. Our feet shuffle in place, itching to close the distance. What? But if you're too scared, we can just go, huh? I'm not scared! Just promise me you'll watch out for me. Uh, promise? I'll even go first! Yeah! So how they sound alike? I mean, the kids, shut up. <laughs> Heart thrumming into our chest, we walk straight up to the doorway, reaching out to fill the space inside. Is there something in there? Does it hurt? It feels tingly. As we step onto the threshold, the tingly spreads over our whole body, and suddenly stops smiling, we continue into a dark room beyond. Oh my god, he is not thinking Mexican at the moment, he's thinking stupid. Okay, darkness surrounds <laughs> surrounds us like fog, almost thick enough to touch. We shiver, suddenly certain that something is in there with us, watching us. Hello? Oh, fuck this, somehow. <laughs> what the fuck? Oh my god. Our words echo strangely in the hollow space, and the voice that returns is not entirely our own. Is someone there? What's your name? Alright, it's probably going up closer because I don't know how you guys can hear me. The leaves at our feet blow aside, revealing a patch of smooth gray stone. And as we watch, whoa, whoa, whoa! Ah, <laughs> uh, uh, if I was a motherfucking kid, I saw that shit. I'd be running. Redfield. That what it says Redfield. Well, that failed. Sounds... Yeah. <laughs> like a teddy bear. I see miss you, Mr. Red. I'm Despacito. 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 <laughs> so, our eyes slowly adjust to the dark room. Squinting, we see what looks like stairs in the far corner, disappearing into a jagging hole, jagged hole in the floor. Despacito, was it safe? Who are you talking to? Hang on a sec. I think there's something. 
wind suddenly howls up through the hole of the floor, knocking us off our feet. The wind reverses directions, dragging us toward the abyss. We dig our fingers into a crack in the floor, just barely resisting. Despacito! Jane! Run! Through the door, we see Jane turn and try to run. But the wind howls after her, snatching her up before she can make it three steps. Ah! Dude, that's so cool. They stepped up their game. Jane slides past us, scrambling for a purchase on the uneven floor. Jane! Jane's necklace chain breaks with a sharp snap, and the whistle vanishes down the hole and to the floor. Despacito! I can't hold on, I'm slipping! Jane starts to cry. Suddenly, our fear ignites into anger. Furious, we scream into the howling darkness. Stop, Mr. Man! Stop it! Right now or else, bitch! Or else my friends are gonna come and burn your stupid house down! Just like that. Oh, shh! <laughs> that scared me. Oh, my God. And the wind dies and the house falls still. Uh, cautiously, we push ourselves up. Jane sobs quietly, a few feet away, still clinging tightly to the floor. Jane, come on, let's get out of here. My, my whistle. It's with my whistle. I know, but we gotta go before it changes its mind and takes us too. Nodding, Jane lets us pull her up and the two of us sprint out the front door. Damn. At the edge of the clearing, we can't resist looking back one more time. The ruins sit still and quiet, showing no signs of life. Despacito, come on! Killing! Turn away, hurrying after Jane behind us. Soft whistle rises and falls as it echoes through the clearing. Chapter 2 What Are You Afraid Of? Okay, I'm back. I need a little break. Clear up my throat. Because my throat fucking hurts at the moment. All day after the pep rally, her mind races with thoughts of Dan and Jane and him. Ah, oh, come on! If Redfield is really back, then Dan is in danger. And we have to help him. Now, have you all turned to page 102 in your textbooks? As our English teacher turns away to write on the board, we open a group text on our phone. This is Despacito. We need to talk. Hey, Despacito! Yo. Sad. What the hell? How did you get my number? Face space. Wow, creeper match. Despacito. Wait, Andy, who's Andy? Despacito, what you want to talk about? <clears throat> oh, that's right, the. Despacito, what you want to talk about? Oh. The pep rally. And don't pretend you don't know what I mean. When, why you want to make, bruh? By the fountain, after school. Can I got practice until six? The same. Meet after. Guys, this is serious. I can't just ditch. We have a game coming up. Fine, we meet at six. Okay, okay. Oh hey, I think you forgot to add Lucas to this text. Crap, you're right. Hang on, let me. Let um. Before we can finish our text, our phone dies. Do I fucking suck at charging? Oh, wait, I thought my phone was dead this morning. I'm a stupid teenager. Okay. Oh, what the hell? Despacito, nice of you to volunteer. Since you're so obviously paying attention, perhaps you'll know the answer to my question. 
When did the last witch trial take place in the United States? Uh. Classmates start to snicker as Mr. Cooper stares us down. Lucas catches her eye for a few rows up. Mm. He winks at us, then opens his hand under the desk. From our angle, we can make out four digits written across his palm. Uh, 1878? Mr. Cooper raises an eyebrow. Well, you certainly kept us in suspense, Despacito, but you are correct! You win 18 million dollars! Fuck yeah! yeah I'm lying. God damn it. 1978. Think about that, everyone. It's not so very long ago. Just 75 years before the crucible. Which will be in this semester something. In literature, as in life, the past is always creeping up just behind us. Ah, oh, that doesn't sound creepy. Bell rings. <clears throat> and so is the end of school. Class dismissed. He looks so he looks so sad. <clears throat> oh, he loves his class. Okay, that's cool. All around us, students begin to pack up their things. We make our way towards Lucas, but Mr. Cooper beats up Peter's there. Uh, Mr. Thomas, a word. <clears throat> uh, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, sure. Damn it. <clears throat> Out in the hall, we lean against the wall near an outlet, charging our phone while we wait for Lucas. Stupid phone, I just charged you! The hallway empties as everyone heads home for the day. Gradually, you become aware of muffled voices inside the classroom. And I know what you're doing. I don't know what you're talking about. May have anyone else fool, but you can't fool me, bitch. Whoa, what the fuck is going on? In there. <laughs> I should probably... Get closer. Now you know something's up. Can't hurt to listen a little more. <clears throat> Guilty, we edge closer and move to press our ear to the door. When cold hands suddenly grab us from behind, covering our eyes. Thank you, uh... Ah! Panic funds our body and we struggle wildly against our capture as we're dragged down the hall. <clears throat> no! Let me go! Let! We, our shouts turn into a gasp of pain as we're shoved backwards into a wall and hear a deafening slam and then muffled laughter. What? Hey! <clears throat> hey! Oh my god, your face. Know it. <clears throat> You big sis, this machine Bitch. Let me out, you fucking freak of nature. Uh, but we wanted to make sure your school year started with a burn. Jocelyn kicks the locker door, making us yelp and cover our ears. You can't be in there, Despacito. We'll check on you tomorrow morning. <laughs> but bye bitch. Damn it. Jocelyn and Cody's laughter recedes down the hall, leaving us alone in the dark, cramped space. After a few minutes of pushing, punching, and swearing, the locker door still won't budge, and we slump against the back wall, defeated. <sighs> okay, perfect. <clears throat> Des Despacito! What now? You guys think of some more fun ways to torture me? Um, more fun? Oh, get lost, Cody. I'm not scared of you. Bang, the whole locker shakes and the shadows all around us seem to thicken. Why does it look like someone's in front of me? <laughs> if you guys can see, there's a little outline here. It looks like someone's in front of me. Closing in. I'm not scared. I'm not scared. I'm not scared. What? I'm not scared. Spin around to find Jane staring up at us. Her hands balled into a fist. Behind her, the ruins loom against the backdrop of twisted trees. Jane. Jane, we have to leave. We try to reach for her, but our body stays frozen in place. 
Night creeps over the woods as we struggle against our invisible prison. Jane watches us with a huge sad eye as darkness bleeds from the doors and windows of the stone house, shadowy tendrils reaching out for her. Promise you won't after me? Jane, I, I don't know what would happen. Oh, I didn't know what would happen? Darkness finally grabs hold of Jane, snatching her back toward the ruins. Espacito! <laughs> Jane screams as the darkness swallows her, and then the shadows explode outward, and Black Hurricane howling towards us. Ah, I really do not feel alright. No, please. I'm sorry. I'm so... The locker door springs open and all. We fall face first onto the floor, gasping frantically for air. Slowly we realize that someone's keep kneeling over us. <sighs> Thanks. Uh, of course. Easy now. We take Lucas' hand and he pulls us to our feet. Uh, how do you get the door open? Uh, I've been telling the school for years that we need to replace these old lockers. Anyone can open them if they know the trick. <coughs> I guess it's a good thing they never took my advice, huh? <laughs> yeah, lucky me. Lucas glances at his watch and he is a weary sigh. Uh, late something? Uh, just a lot to do. As always, did you want to report this incident? I can take you by the office if you like. Uh, I, I doubt it'd do any good, but... um. There's actually something else I need to talk to you about. Oh, can we talk? Can we walk and talk? I've got some things to take care of before I head out. Me and the two of us set off to a brisk pace. Okay, it, it's about what happened at the pep rally. Oh, the blackout. Don't worry, I've already filled the maintenance report. Can't have the lights going out during the basketball game. How the f- There's no way a, class, a student body president would have this much control. And the voices? The, uh, I don't know what you're talking about. But, sorry, one sec. Before we can say another word, Lucas ducks into, an, uh, into the auditorium. Inside, Lucas waves to a group of band kids on stage. Sounding great, guys. Just make sure you're done in here by quarter of four. Okay, drama club needs time to set up. Uh, Lucas, listen to me. Mr. Red is back. M Mr. Red? What? From when we were kids? Lucasito, come on. That was just some make-believe game that you and Jay made up. Are you sure about that? Lucas looks rattled even more than so when the phone in his pocket starts buzzing. I, uh, I have to answer this. Uh, excuse me. Slips around... Uh, us and out the side door. But I mean, <laughs> he's already in the middle of the phone call. Yes, Mama. I know college prep is tonight, but we talked about this. Because I have to meet with the homecoming and yearbook committees at school, and I can't be in three places at once. Goddamn. I know, Mama. I know. Yeah, I love you too. But I. It... Jeez, you really are busy. You know, if you would just slow down for a second. Pretty sure the school would literally collapse. Look, his phone buzzes again. He checks it in size. Ah, uh, great. Now, the school paper says they need an interview. Tomorrow. Look, his words come faster and faster, growing louder as he starts to pace back and forth. How am I supposed to get ready for an interview by tomorrow? I can't handle this right now. Well, Lucas, it's just one. Look, at stop and breathe for a second. Graham on Lucas' shoulders, meeting his eyes. Just focus on me, okay? Deep breath in, okay? Take a long, slow breath, mentoring for Lucas. Met, what? Motioning for Lucas to do the same. Good. Now back out, nice and slow. Ah. <laughs> That's the Lucas. Take a few more breaths. Finally, he smiles at us. Better? Yeah, a little. Good. Now about this interview. 
Maybe it'd be less stressful if I helped you prepare. We could grab a copy down the street and I could throw you some softball questions. I've been meaning to catch up with you anyways. It's a perfect excuse for me to ask all kinds of nosy stuff. That would be great. You really do that? Wanna help Lucas Bear with his interview? Well, I mean, I would, but guess what? I don't have fucking... Well, on second thought, actually, I had something else I wanted to talk to you about. <clears throat> oh, you mean what happened to the pet rally? Oh, yeah. Yeah, so, uh... You hear them, then. The whispers, the voices. Lucas scratches his arm, uncomfortably glancing around. Ah. Uh, I mean, look, I, I don't need it getting around that the class president hears voices. And, hypothetically, suppose I did. What then? Well, hypothetically, a bunch of us are meeting by the fountain. Talk about it at 6 p.m. So you in, or are you too busy? I, uh, my schedule's pretty full right now, but, but I guess I can come for a little while just to listen. Great. See you then. Yeah, uh, see you then. You know, I was waiting for it to be 6 o'clock. I just want to talk about this shit. If that's 6 o'clock, that's not 6 o'clock. A few hours later, the sun sinks behind the trees. As we walk out, oh, fuck, walk out of the building. We find Noah, Lily, Lucas already waiting in silence. Andy arrives a minute later while Stacy's trailing behind, texting busily. Hey guys, one sec, on the dock. Jeez. How's it this dark already? Okay, well, thank you. <laughs> Noah stands up from his seat on the fountain. Lily moves to stand beside us. Her hands twisting nervously together. Who I miss him, bruh? <sighs> I don't see Ava. Ava speaks suddenly from behind us, making Lily jump. You guys look like the cover of a Christian rock album. Jeez. Who are you? A ninja? Oh. Vampire. I see you around the sun. I'm a daywalker, fear me. Ha! <laughs> blade, blade. <laughs> McClear though. <coughs> ah. Uno momento. <coughs> Sorry. Okay. Okay, look. We all know why we're here. We're black out at the pepper rally. The wind. The voice. I know what you're talking about. Oh, that's my voice. I know what you're talking about. Stacy. You came here for a reason. We've barely spoken in years. None of you would be here unless you were just as freaked out as I was and heard the same thing I did. Everyone play together. We play together, bruh. A long, heavy pause fills the air, as everyone refuses to look at each other. There, there's something else. <laughs> Lily holds out her phone, shaking hands. Lily, are these texts from Dan? Wait, you got them too. Hold up, did we all get weird ass texts from Dan last night? <clears throat> her fingers move toward the bruises on her neck. Which begin to ache at our touch. Guys, I had to tell you something. We summon our courage and tell them everything that happened to us last night. The text, the blackout, the creature that wore Dan's face. I know it sounds crazy, but... <clears throat> I think it was him. I think Mr. Red is back. We have to go to the cops right now. We didn't find that sicko that attacked you when... Andy, there's no point. There's no way the police would believe us. You don't know that. Ava, would your dad believe you if you said a nightmare monster was coming to kill us all? Hell no. He'd make me pee in a cup and then scratch and search my room for drugs. Besides, what are cops gonna do against Redfield? Arrest him? <laughs> yeah, oh, I, I get it, cop. Let me get a dead mouse to testify. Oh, my right, bro. I said I get it. God. Noah, leave her alone. 
Him. Huh? Him. You said him. Oh. Oh, jeez. I'm sorry, Andy. It's fine. <laughs> I know. I was like, is that a typo? I think that's how they covered up his typo. Andy shrugs, crossing his arms. He aims a sharp kick at a pebble, sending it flying across the street. Oh, yeah. Uh, speaking of cop stuff, Dan's parents reported him missing this morning. Whoa! They what? <clears throat> Whoa! Dan, Dan's missing? Are you just telling us? And you're just telling us about this now? Bruh? I figured you would have heard God. Not everyone's dad is the sheriff. Guys, Dan could be in trouble. We have to go find him. Despacito, come on. He needs actual help. From, like, adults. And professionals. Professional adults. No. It has to be us. And why is that precisely? Because... We're his friends. Oh. Oh, now you're his friends. Has anyone here besides me even spoken to Dan in like the past 10 years? No. But that's all the more reason we have to do something. We owe it to him. I know nobody wants to do dredge this back up. Dredge this stuff back up. But it happened. We all remember Mr. Red and we all saw what he did to Jane. We can't let him do the same thing to Dan. No one did anything to Jane Despacito. It was just a freak accident. That's bad. I didn't know it, bruh. All I know is that we were a bunch of dumb kids who shouldn't have been playing in the woods by ourselves, bitch. Look, let's all just calm down for a second and consider the facts. Everything that happened at the rally could be explained by some faulty wiring. As for Dan, what exactly are you proposing we do? Isn't it obvious? We have to stop this. We have to go find Dan and figure out what he did so we can undo it. We have to go... Uh, to the west! The wind picks up. Leaves flee across the asphalt as Lily backs away, shaking her head. Uh, no, 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 no. I'm not going back there. Noah moves towards Lily, holding up his hands in a calming gesture. Lily, I know you're scared, but if we want to stop this, we have to. Andy blocks Noah's path, placing a gentle but firm hand on his chest. Back on that. Lily doesn't have to do anything she doesn't want to. Are you serious right now, bruh? Somewhere, a heavy door slams open as one group tenses like animals caught in a predator's stare. Three children leaders ran the corner of the gym, chatting happily as they pass. They vanish into the school and we start to breathe again. Noah, maybe you have time to go running around the woods chasing boogeymen, but some of us have real problems. A gay kidnapper, some shadow monster, nightmare dude seems like a pretty real problem, bruh. Guys, let's just calm down. Don't tell me to calm down, it's Mesita, bruh. Dan is missing, and none of us gives a damn. That's not fair. We're all worried about Dan. But if the police have already been called, then we should let them handle it. Oh, like they handled it when my sister died? Oh, no, uh... <sighs> No, I had enough of this. Redville killed Jay right in front of us, and you are shrugged it off like nothing happened. Hey, no one shrugged it off anything. The hell you did it, class president cheerleader basketball jock. You all seem to be doing just fine. The second Jay was in the ground, you were all happy to move on with your life, and you're pulling the same stunt with Jan. Oh, now you care about that. Where have you been for the past year? Where were you when Dan got totally wasted at Winter Formal? Where were you when he was having breakdowns after every football game? Where the hell were you, Noah? Where were any of you? I didn't know Dan was having that much trouble. Why are you saying that? 
Because apparently, when you're a big, strong football star, you're not allowed to have feelings. We could have helped. We could have helped. I could have helped. Ooh. Well, now it's too late, bitch. Stacy turns away and storms off with another word. Without another word, Lily looks down at the ground, holding her textbooks in a shaking white knuckle grip. Lily, uh, I'm sorry, but I can't go back there. I just can't. Lily turns, hurrying back towards the school. Nora turns to Lucas without an accusing frown. I guess you're gonna bail too, Captain America. Bruh. Look, even if I did believe all of this, I just don't have the time. Lucas turns and heads back towards the school. Fine, just bury your hands to the sand. This isn't just gonna stop you now. Bruh. Noah. No, leave them alone, dude. If I hadn't seen that thing last night, I'd probably be in denial, too. We turn to Ava, who's cleaning her fingernails. So what about you? Uh, KB Deep Woods Ghost Hunt is emphatically my brand. I'm in, bro. Me, too. I don't know about this ghost crap, but Dan's a good guy. He needs us. So, when are we going to find it? When are we going Friday? What? No! What? No, we have to go tonight, bruh. Uh, I can't. My dad got this restrict school night curfew, and wow, does this sound really out loud. Oh my fucking god. Yeah, I can't go tonight either. The team needs me here early tomorrow for training. So they do. I have a team, dude, bruh. No, where they're having fun without some minority around to exclude. Uh, Andy stiffens ready to snap at Ava, then Ritz grumbling. I, I mean, you're not wrong. I have to keep showing up, right? They can't ignore me forever. I admire your optimism. So that's it. You're both sure you can't come? Andy and Ava look at each other, doubtfully. The words are full of danger, but there's strength in numbers. Bring more friends to decrease your chance of losing nerve. Or even gain some. Ah! Uh, how many? Fuck! How many? Fuck! How many? Fuck! 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 I don't. <laughs> God damn it! Mozzie's scared. God damn it! I don't think I can do this. Um. Volunteer! Oh <laughs> God damn it! I'll go. We have to help Dan and stop this before anyone else gets hurt. Then I'm coming too, bruh. If you see any aura or spectators or shadow figures, take pictures. Also, try not to get murdered, I guess. Seriously, though. You guys stay safe and keep us in the loop. No one nods. Ava and Andy head back towards the school. Alright, then. I've got to go in and grab my stuff, so you go on ahead. We'll meet up in front of the hardware store. Alright. Then what? Then... We go save Dan. Okay, hey guys, how's it going? Um, I sort of started it a bit late, my bad. But, uh, yeah, let's continue this where it's going. <sighs> okay. After a tense meeting with her old friend group, we resolved to go looking for the missing quarterback, Dan Pierce. Mm, yeah. But on your way to grab your stuff from your locker, you came across... Who? Brittany, Cody, Jocelyn, and Stacy surrounding you. Something, something, something. Sorry, I'm looking at my phone because apparently it's saying I got something, but I'm not saying... Oh, yeah, I did get something. Yeah, I'll respond to that later. Uh, surrounding a concerned Lily. Oh, come on. Great, like tonight wasn't bad enough. Okay, but seriously, this stalker thing is getting a little old. There's no one, uh... Come on, I think you little love now. It's kind of sweet. Uh... Cody holds up a piece of notebook paper. paper. No, <laughs> notebook paper. His mocking voice echoing in the empty hall. 
I don't understand what I did to make you hate me. Where's the kind of sweet girl who braided my, uh, braided my hair for the middle school dance? Uh, 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 is that true, Brit Brit? Where you and the Ridley nerd bash friends? Real mature, guys. Brittany snatches the letter from Cody, tearing it into process. She rounds. On, well, what? She rounds on Lily, her face red with fury. Guess you didn't get the message this morning, so let me spell it out for you. This sad little crush of yours was funny for a while, but now it's starting to get on my nerves. I, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I just thought, I just wanted to... Uh, uh, Brittany, l let's just go. I'm sure she... I'm not done talking. Whatever creepy dra daydreams you have about me, you're going to throw them out the window. Because to me, you're nothing. You're never going to be anything other than a pathetic basement dwelling. Hey, leave her alone. God damn, you stupid bitch. I sure, what? Tell off Brittany. Tell us Stacy. No, nah, tell off Brittany, bitch. <clears throat> High school's hard enough without you and your pet vultures prying. On everyone. Brittany stops mid sentence. She turns her snarl, turning into a sneer. Oh, good. Despacito, the white knight in here to save poor Lily. Well, if I'm the white knight, I guess that makes you the evil bitch. Oh, sorry, witch. Oh, I'm sorry, witch bitch. This, this was in You don't have to do this. Just go. For once, we agree on something. I think I've had enough of Despacito sass for one day. Cody... Cody steps forward, grinning wickedly. <laughs> Come here. I <coughs> want to show you this really cool thing I found in the cafeteria dumpster. No, I've got this. Stacy grabs us by the elbow, steering us away. Look at Stacy taking initiative. Oh, taking initiative. <laughs> Works for me. We're still shopping on Saturday night. Saturday, right? Just saw the cutest sweater at J and N the other day. Uh, yeah, I'll call you. Just before Stacy drags us out the door, we glance black to see Lily vanish around the corner, tears streaming down her face. <laughs> Stacy, you bitch! Stacy finally lets go of my arm outside the front door. How how are your hands so freaking strong? Ten years of gymnastics. Gymnastics, huh? Explains how you flexible enough to walk around with your head up your own ass. Excuse me, what's that supposed to mean? Open your eyes, Brittany. Open your eyes. Brittany and her goons are just a bunch of malicious jerks. They're not your friends. You think I don't know that? You think I want to be Brittany's psychic? You think I don't know she's literally the worst person on the planet? Then why? Thinking back to the pet rally, we remember Stacy flawlessly trembling past and how she tripped right after looking at Brittany. Stacy, Did Brittany threaten you? What, what do you mean? Every time I see you guys together, you act like she's got a knife on your throat. What I don't get is how she could possibly be a threat to you. You're more popular than her and your family is well off. Then that just means I've got more to lose. Stacy goes quiet for a long moment, suddenly glancing over her shoulder. Stacy, you can trust me. Whatever it is, I I just want to help. She turns to us and we really look at her for the first time, seeing a shadow beneath her eyes that conceal her can't quite easy. Brittany's blackmailing me. What? Blackmail? So, the fall during the pep rally? Rule one, uh, never outshine Brittany on the cheer squad. Closely followed by rule two, never back, never talk back to Brittany. And rule three, buy Brittany all the tassy ass sweaters and ankle booties she wants. Jeez, Stacy, what does Brittany have on you? Just, just a video that could totally tank my mom's re-election campaign and earn me the title of worst daughter in the entire universe. Brittany had this big birthday party over the summer. It wasn't really my scene, but I felt like I needed to make an appearance, you know? 
The perils of being popular. Oh, the peril. My bad. The worst part is, I actually had a great night. It was the first time in years that I just let go and had fun, but then... Stacy sighs, rubbing her temples. Whatever, y you probably don't care about my dumb mistakes. <sighs> you don't have to tell me. There must be someone who can help you, though. I mean, your mom is the mayor. Couldn't she do anything? Despacito, are you insane? Dad would ground me for 20 years, and then Mom would murder me. I do remember your mom being pretty strict. She's totally one-track-minded. Everything with her is campaign this, the voters that, blah, 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 blah. Wow, what does this sound like? So, technically, Stacy is Tessa. And <laughs> oh, funny. If she found out I endangered her campaign, she'd never let me leave the house again. And if that video gets out, I can see the headlines now. Mayor's daughter tells all. Green's marriage, family, and entire political career as shame. So you're just going to sit back and let Bernie take everything from you? I I'll figure something out. I, I just don't know what yet. Trails off as the door opens nearby. Lily emerges from the school. Her face wet with tears and starts walking toward the bus stop. <laughs> I better go after her. I should probably just go. I, I don't think I can face her right now. Turns away and headed, heading for her car. We heard to catch up with Lily. Hey, Lily. Uh, hi, Despacito. I, I just want to say, I'm here for you. I, I don't really understand what's going on between you and Brittany, but I want to help. A anytime you want to talk about it, I I'll listen, okay? Lily smiles, brushing away with tears. Thanks, Despacito. I, I think that would help a lot. Lily turns, heading for a bus stop down the block. See you tomorrow. See you. Hitching our bag a little higher on our shoulder, we continue down the road toward town. A few minutes later, we turn onto the main street and spot Noah waiting in front of the Gunther's Hardware. So I got held up by some Britney drama. Ready to head out? <clears throat> I was thinking we should gear up before we go. That dirt monster that came after us could still be out there. Bless, who knows what else. Good point. Mr. Red is back. We should be ready for anything. No inside, no one wanders off to the browser or over the east album track looking at the guy behind the counter. You! The guy looks up from his phone, smiling in recognition. Hey! What? This is the blast from the past! How's it going, Despacito? Sounds like someone figured out how we know each other. Gonna let me in on the secret? <clears throat> oh, cool, but it's so much more fun to mess with you, bro. Here, I'll give you a hint. I figured out who you were when my sister mentioned that you helped her out at the pet rally this morning. And the pepper. Oh, her. The Connor Green. Right in one. You always were in the smarty browns of the grow, y'all. How have I never seen you here before? The child I lost his eyes because Ben's bells over crashing at my friend's place in Auckland. Figured out to be a rival kind of season. Don't make sure moms taste. Don't murder each other. That's awful of you. Are you happy to be home? <laughs> I don't want to know the other two. She has gone to these days to catch up with old friends. Can't say I miss mom and dad's lectures though. Every time I go over there, this is a apply for college. This is to get dark. Uh, ah, sounds terrible. Anyway, what brings you to Gunther's Highway, your local source of all things home improvement? Ah, uh, nothing in particular. I, uh, trail off our eyes caught by something hanging up the wall behind Connor's head. What is that? Huh? Oh, the pole saw. Connor takes the tool down and it's hooked and hands it over to the corner. Counter. 
Ooh. Oh, babe. Oh, yeah, my dad had one of those things. That's cool. We have to pull Shaw in our hands, unable to suppress a wide grin. This is awesome. Very, very pretty high up branches of war for fighting off zombies. Fortunately, it's also just a display model. Should have them back in stock for a few days. Reluctantly, we hand the pole saw back to Carter, returns it to its place on the wall. I guess I'll just look around then. Sure, we just rest all you need here. Smiling, we make our way past the counter and start walking along the narrow aisles. Aisles. A a a whatever. A little while later, we find Noah browsing one of the aisles near the back of the store. Finding anything useful? No, unless you want to go after Mr. Rare with a bunch of duct tape and twine. Bruh. We give a heartfelt laugh, moving to scan the shelves on the other side. I don't know how you can be so calm. I'm on the verge of a breakdown over here. Calm isn't the word I'd use. I just... I have to know, bruh. I'm going to sigh, rubbing his hands over his eyes. This has to be haunting me for he It's been haunting me for years, Despacito. What he did. What we did. What he did, bruh. You're hit by a sudden vibrant memory. A little red-haired girl in a blue dress, giggling as she runs through the trees. Come on, Despacito. We shake ourselves, Jane's laughter echoing in the back of our mind. Yeah, me too. Mom blames me, you know, for Jane and for Dad leaving right after, bruh. I'm sure that's not true. It is. She said it. She said it in my face regularly, actually. Give me a sec. So, I guys, was just talking to my nephew. Okay. Uh, uh it is. She said it to my face regularly, actually, bruh. No, uh. I'm so sorry. No shrugs again. Yeah. The worst part is that, uh, this sounds lame as hell, but the day I lost my sister, I lost my whole family. My mom, you guys, everyone, bro. Oh. Oh, fuck, that hurt. No, I. Uh, oh, shit. Shit. <laughs> God damn. See, I don't want to say you didn't lose me, and then I don't want to say how to. You didn't lose me, bro. I'm here for you now, and I always will be. That's Connie. Also, not true, bro. <laughs> Trying to have a moment here, Noah. God damn. I never wanted all of us to fall apart. I hope it's not too late for us to come back and get together. Noah shrugs indifferently, but we see a smile tugging at the corner of his mouth. <laughs> uh, anything's possible, bruh. I wish things were different. Yeah, me too, bruh. The two of us continue to browse the aisles in silence until... Hey, I think I've got some. Pick up a baseball bat with one hand and a garland, falling up barbed wire with the other. What do you think? It's cobblers, it treads, it bashes in dirt, monster brains. Damn, yeah! That wreck! You gonna get it, bro? Hmm. Oh, great! I'm just gonna die in this fucking thing. Leave without it. Time to set the bat and barbed wire back on the shelf. That's probably a little overkill. Hey, you shit, bruh. Shut up. <laughs> I wanted to. Fuck you. God damn it. We're all done here. Yeah, bruh. We turn to see Noah loitering next to the shelf full of flashlights. The flash! 
Did I literally just say fleshlights? Oh my god, I cannot believe I just said that. I'm not gonna show y'all, I'm not even gonna tell you what that is if you don't know what it is. Because I'm saving y'all's pure minds. I cannot believe I just fucking said that. I am fucking tired. <laughs> oh my god, did you wanna get, did you wanna get some? I uh, guess, guess I was just thinking about how dark it's gonna be in there. I don't love the idea of something sneaking up on us, bruh. This one could even double as a club, bruh. Noah picks up a heavy black flashlight, gives it a couple swings, it looks at the price tag, flinches, then puts it back on the shelf. Yeah, never mind, I'll be fine, bruh. Buy Noah the flashlight to boost his nerve, he'll also be able to light path and watch your back. Fuck! <laughs> I hate this fucking game. Okay, let's go then. Let the use bruh. Let the use that. Ah, uh, maybe next time. Alright then, see you around this pasito. Ah, uh, definitely. Probably. Sealing yourself, your bush, open the door and step on out onto the cold night. Yeah, <clears throat> that's a weird. And follow back roads out of town until we find ourselves standing at the edge of the dark woods. Alright, this is it. You carrying a what, bruh? No one heads into the woods and we find ourselves suddenly alone, except for a huge crow per perched in the branches of a nearby pine tree. The bird watches us with one glossy black eye as we take a deep breath and step onto the wood step into the woods. Wow, this place is creepy as ever, bruh. I don't know. It feels almost like home. As we pause to get our bearings, a cool breeze brushes past, carrying a faint but familiar whistling sound. Despacito, where are you going, bruh? You don't hear that? It's coming from this way. The sound draws us to the base of an old twisted tree where something hangs from the lowest branch. We reach forward with the trembling hands. <gasps> oh shit, son! Jane's whistle! I can't. Oh, <laughs> I had to click the button. No one appears at our side as we stare down at the whistle, its tarnished surface gleaming in the moonlight. <clears throat> Is that. I thought it was lost. It was her birthday present. If she ever got in trouble, all she had to do was blow it in. And we stop short, tears welling up in our eyes. Luckily, Nora interrupts, giving us time to compose ourselves. You hear that, bruh? This fucking hear my thing just keep on going crazy. I don't know. We start speaking and close our eyes. We hear the wind moving through the trees, and something else moving too. I think something's coming. I don't know what it is, but be ready. We jump nearly crying out as Noah suddenly grabs hold of our forearm. Don't move, bruh. Slowly, hardly daring to breathe, we turn our head, following Noah's petrified gaze. Twenty feet down the path, we see a twisted, shadowy creature with eyes that blaze ember in the dark. That's not a dirt master, bruh. The creature advances, a gob of sticky yellow saliva dripping from its jaws. This must be the... What do we do, bruh? <laughs> The creature barks, lunging forward. Run! Panicked, we will around and bolt into the trees. Nora crashing through the branches. Undergrowth closed behind. <laughs> Dodging around a fallen tree, we gasp as another hulking shape looms up in front of us, blocking our path. <laughs> 
Ah! You make a sharp left turn, and the creature howls. It falls in besides the first creature's skeletal limbs, clacking as they run. Despacito, we need... Yeah, Despacito, we need to turn around. We're heading straight for the ruins. Crap, you're right. Come on. Move to the right, and one of the creatures surges forward, forcing us back onto the path. I think they're hurting us. They want us to go to the ruins. And yeah, why does the fact? Damn, bruh. Still running, we quickly glance around. One creature trails behind us, driving us forward. Go, while the other sticks close to the right. All right, on my signal. We go straight. We keep following the path. We can't even go this way. Who knows what'll happen if they drive us to the ruins? You have a better idea? We should go to the right. That's the way they're trying to block. Oh, that makes sense. You ready? Now! Yeah, because he said right, and I was like, what? Stealing yourselves, we make a sudden hard turn to the right, dodging past the mossy creature. And the mossy creature snaps at us, but misses. Covering our face, we crash through a thick wall of bushes. <laughs> we find ourselves in a quiet, moonlit clearing. Where'd it go? Do you see it, brah? We, we quickly scan the clearing and spot another skeletal creature crouching over a still figure lying in the dirt. Oh my god. Damn! Hey, get away from me, brah! The creature lets go of Dan's leg and lifts its head to snarl at us. I'm so horrible at this. <laughs> we hear answering growls. Growls from all around. And suddenly the woods are full of burning amber eyes and glittering teeth. Our hands tighten into fists. Get ready. We can't let them take Dan. No one nods grimly. I'm ready, bruh. Now let's do this. Take a deep breath and yell. We're coming, Dan! At a sound of our voice, the plant creatures spring into action, closing in from all sides. <laughs> One charges straight at us, howling and snapping close fangs. Whoa! What do I do? Grab it! Our hands dart forward, grabbing horror of the thick vines that make up the creature's neck. No! You don't! I'm gonna stomp it! With all our strength, we throw the creature to the ground and bring our foot down on its skull. The skull cracks and the creature's eyes go dark. Yeah, bitch! That's for Dan! Another creature slams into us, knocking us to the ground. His powerful jaw snaps and slumbers just inches from our face as we strain to push it away. Little Hal Bear! Hey, I'm, I'm coming! Nora rushes over to us, grabbing hold of the branches, sticking into the creature's back. Oh, out of the creature's back. Jet. Ah! With Noah's help, we manage to wriggle free. Noah struggles to hold onto the creature, awkwardly kicking at it. Hold on, Al. I got this one. You need to get Dan, bruh. Nodding, we sprint to where Dan lies unconscious. A single creature advances on him. Leafy hang hackles rising at us as it's moved between its... Wait, what? I don't know what the fuck I just read. Yeah! Get away from my friend, bitch! Vines snake up from the creature's back, whipping past us to wrap around Dan's leg. It starts to back up, dragging Dan towards the trees. No, you don't! We grab Dan's wrist, digging into the heels as us and the creature fight a grim tug of war over Dan's limp body. Our feet start to slide, and the creature's howl falls 
us and Dan towards the trees. Damn it! Gritting our teeth, we let go of Dan with one hand and grab the vines pulling ourselves hand over hand toward the creature. Oh. Restraining the hold on, we lift one foot, kick the creature in its gritting face. We kick again and again until the vines go limp in our hands. Take that. As we watch the disembodied skull of our feet, twitches, vines with toward the other bo- the parts of its body trying to pull itself back together. Oh, hell no. We quickly grab the skull before it can reattach its scrum in our hands, jaw snapping. Ah, ah, we turn, chucking the skull into the bushes. Let's see you regenerate now, bitch. The clearing goes still, and it seems as though, for now, nothing else wants to kill us. We're... okay? I'm fine. It's him we're worried about, bruh. He kneeled down next to Dan, gently brushing leaves and dirt from his face. He's, he's breathing. But jeez, he looks terrible. Dan! Dan, buddy! Gotta wake up, okay? At the sound of our voice, Dan's eyelids twitch, then began to flutter open. Dan! Dan, what happened to you, bro? Dan's eyes seem to look past us as he opens his mouth, mumbling softly. Came. Came to find. Let's see. What? What did you come to find? Dan grabs the front of our shirt and pulls us in. His eyes suddenly clear, bore right into us. Why did you come, Despacito? What? We had to. We couldn't leave you out here. You shouldn't have come, bro. He pulls us closer. His voice is terrified. Hiss. No. He can leave. Dan lets us go, and we fall back, scrambling away from him. No. It's my seat, What is it? What he said, huh? We shake our head, unable to speak as Dan's eyes flutter closed. With a final sigh, he goes still once more. Now he can leave. What? I'm so confused. What is going on? Yes. Okay, well, that is it for this one. Um, goddamn. This is actually getting pretty damn intense, and I actually really enjoy it. Um, but let me know what y'all guys think. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this little Halloween special I put together. It only took, uh, the rest of my Sunday and all of Monday. Well, not all, but half of Monday. A little bit of Monday <laughs> to, uh, make it. I'm sorry it's sort of half-assed. Not really a lot of editing done. It's just... Um, I wanted to just give y'all something on Halloween because you know a lot of YouTubers would do shit on Halloween. I wanted to give y'all something for Halloween or hell, I'll probably even do something for Thanksgiving and Christmas. Who knows? But you know what? Um, hope you guys enjoyed. Um, like, subscribe, share this video if you guys want. Leave a comment saying if you guys want this to be its own series on Sunday or just make it a Tuesday thing. Or if you guys want, we can bring back an old thing that I tried to do a long time ago and no one actually kept up with it, but it was called... Horror Thursdays. I'm going to try keeping that bitch up again. But, um, yeah. Uh, tell me what you guys wanted to see with this series. Maybe we can do more of it. Maybe we can't do more of it. I don't know. But it's going to be a Halloween special. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And I'll see you guys in the next episode of Anything I Make. It lives in the woods. Bad Boys Girl. Whatever. Peace.